Good afternoon everyone and welcome to today's educational webinar on model based definition. My name is Lee, Lee Edmonds and I am joined today by my colleague Andrew Hansen. The aim today is to transfer some knowledge around this approach to communicating engineering information. The webinar is being recorded and a link to the replay will be sent to you all later today. Firstly, we will take a look at some of the challenges a model-based approach can help solve. We will then give you an overview of what model-based definition and enterprise are, look at how the tools we use for design have evolved to bring us to this point, and then look at a brief demonstration of PTC solutions in this area. Finally, we will review some best practice advice on how to decide if adoption of a model-based approach is right for your business. Let's take a look at some of the common challenges that might lead a business to explore the value of a model-based approach. In today's competitive landscape, we are under constant pressure to deliver to our customer on time. This is fast becoming one of the top measures customers use to determine whether we secure future business. Product development teams are being asked to develop and deliver projects faster than ever before by reducing time to manufacture, usually with less headcount to work with. Customers are also demanding higher product quality. This makes the reduction of any non-conformances during the manufacturing process a key factor. We then have economical challenges, the constant pressure to reduce direct and indirect costs and to reduce scrap and rework. A recent survey by Aberdeen Group found that 30 to 40% of non-conformances were due to inaccuracy and misinterpretation of 2D drawings. It's a growing challenge that fewer people coming into manufacturing have done any basic training in drafting and find it difficult to understand traditional 2D drawings. We also have more non-engineering users downstream who want to reuse our engineering data along with the growing need to collaborate effectively and consistently with customers, suppliers and distributed manufacturing sites. It seems we've been talking about going paperless in manufacturing for years but there are, and there are many obvious, obvious benefits. One of the main challenges a business faces as they work towards this goal is deciding how best to share the manufacturing information electronically. Model-based engineering falls into two categories. Model-based definition, or MBD, involves replacing the traditional 2D drawing with a fully annotated 3D model that contains all the information required to manufacture or assemble your components or product. Model-based enterprise, or MBE, is where the MBD model is then shared in a controlled way downstream with other stakeholders. With an MBE approach, the rich information contained in the 3D model can be utilized by manufacturing, quality, and a host of other downstream departments. Let's take a look now at some maturity levels. The first level of maturity is drawing centric. If you're not using a data management tool like PTC Windchill, this is probably where you are today. You'll be using your CAD tool purely as a method to create a 2D drawing. This is then controlled as a separate business object, often in a manual paper-based manner. The second level of maturity is model centric. Here, the 2D drawing is still the master when it comes to manufacturing, but it is stored and controlled alongside its associated 3D model in a data management system. The third level of maturity is model-based definition. Here, all the information required to manufacture and inspect the product is included in a single 3D file. Here, it's the 3D CAD model that's the master and is usually accessed electronically by the downstream user. The fourth and final level of maturity is model-based enterprise. Here, the 3D model is fully leveraged by all downstream departments, both internally and externally, who will access it via a data management solution. So with levels one and two, which is where the majority of you are today, the 2D drawing is still the authority. Whereas when we move up through levels three and then four, the 3D model becomes the master and the 2D drawing becomes virtually redundant. So let's take a look at how we got to this point. 
Think back to the days when we were moving off the drawing board and onto 2D CAD. We had rooms full of designers and draftsmen using pencil, ruler and paper to produce 2D drawings for manufacturing. When we moved to 2D CAD tools, the way we did our work changed, but the output was pretty much the same as what was produced on the boards. We then moved from 2D CAD to 3D CAD. The way we did our work changed again, but the output was still the same 2D drawing. In the 80s, 90s and early 2000s, as we transitioned from the board through 2D CAD to 3D CAD, the output was still the same static 2D drawing we've been producing for centuries before. When we make the move to model based definition, however, how we do our work changes again, albeit using extended functionality in the same 3D CAD tool, but the output is changed to something much richer in content and of a much higher downstream value to the business. So let's take a look at where this value is. We've listed a few of the main benefits here. Delivery times are decreased as the time spent creating 2D detail drawings is reclaimed. This is further reinforced by the ability to automate the transfer of the information through the business. We become more efficient as there's only one file to manage and update. The time we effectively spend updating two separate sets of information that are the 2D drawing and the 3D model is eliminated. We also reduce scrap and rework. With all the information required to manufacture the product in a single file, there's less chance of information key to accurate manufacture being missed. There are also less errors caused by misinterpretation when working with this easier to understand 3D information. This in turn improves product quality with the number of non-conformances reducing. When we create a 3D model, we build a lot of valuable information into it during its creation, a lot of which is lost when the 2D drawing is the master. By adopting MBD as an approach, we greatly improve our utilisation of these valuable 3D assets. In a recent publication by the NCMS Model Based Enterprise Forum, GE claimed to have reduced their tool and design times by 75% after adopting model based methods. I'd like to hand over now to Andrew, who will give you an overview of PTC's MBD solutions, along with detail of what is available today in Creole 2 and 3, along with news of what's new for MBD in Creole 4. Thank you, Lee, for that introduction. Before we take a look at the software in use, we can see that there is a range of software available from PTC to suit the different areas of an MBD process from creating with Creo Parametric, managing with Windchill, through to viewing with Creo View Express. Taking a look now at a few use cases, we can see how the technology can be applied in real-world situations. The MBD approach greatly increases our flexibility around sharing only the critical information each consumer has. You could, for instance, create a view for each group of users that need to consume the information only displaying the information critical to their role in the process. Product inspection is an area where MBD is commonly applied. You can create a view, for instance, that includes both the inspection instructions and just the key dimensions that need to be validated. As they say, a picture speaks a thousand words. MBD is a great medium for sharing product information with customers in a visual and engaging manner. This streamlines customer design reviews as the information and design intent are much easier to digest and understand. The same can be said for our colleagues in more commercial roles. Using MBD, it's much easier to communicate design ideas with stakeholders in sales and marketing. Let us now take a look at some of these and how easy it is to create a rich source of 3D content that can be shared and reused by different departments downstream in your business. Within Creo, we see straight away in this example, a rich set of information is visible and available to the user, here showing company contractual information. To navigate into the MBD environment, we can select the annotate tab and one of the key areas that is visual here 
is we have a series of tabs, which we'll talk about in a bit. In this environment, it gets the user away from having to understand and create very detailed 2D drawings, sometimes on a single sheet, into manageable, rich 3D content. Selecting the tab views along the bottom of the window gives the user an easy way to split the information out into manageable views, of which we get graphical previews. As mentioned earlier, being able to categorize the information into different tabs, in this case, mass and material properties, ensures that the end user is not overwhelmed with information and can concentrate working on the content required for the model view in front of them. Here we see manufacturing information and additional notes captured. By having this information contained on multiple views with a defined naming convention as part of your company standards makes it easier for information to be found. Taking a look at cross sections with detailed model information makes it easier to see what is going on inside the model and capturing the design intent. Here we have an early completed view containing information about part names, dimensions, geometric tolerances, and welding definitions. Let us finish this model by adding the last few dimensions required. To work through this, I'm going to use a familiar tool from the drawing environment using show annotations and selecting the model. This gives me the preview and the dynamic capability to select the dimensions I want to show. There are common tools within here to enable me to select and manipulate what is required. In this case, the textile. A very quick and simple notation change. We have this familiar interface from the detailing environment of Creo, making the adoption of MVD easier as this functionality is built on the same approach. Another area is I might want to add a note to capture some information for manufacturing. So on this particular edge, I'm going to create a note and say, to say clearance is required. Here it is very easy to manipulate the note, to put it into position, and very quickly change the settings. So, with this information easily documented, I can easily go and look at another one. So let us move on to completing the definition of another view using a different approach. Here we are using a consistent UI of features from the drawing environment within the 3D modeling environment, making the creation of rich 3D model-based information simple and streamlined. First, I'll select my annotation plane and I might go and add a simple dimension. The dimension is easily placed, and I might want to add some additional information, such as a geometric tolerance. Here we can see with this interface, it is the same familiar interface from a 2D drawing environment, giving me a very easy update. As I manipulate this, we can see that the preview on screen updates dynamically, giving me rich feedback to the end user of what the actual object is going to be, before it is created. A quick change on the orientation of this and placing it where I want it and it's created. Another area I might want to do is add some safety instructions. To help me with this, I'm going to add a note. But in this case, it's going to sit flat to the screen so it's always visible. And as this is a company standard, I'm going to bring it in from a text file. So that note is easily added to this particular view, making it easy to use. Another key area of information to share is bills of materials, as seen in this view, with an exploded view and the annotated notes of the components that's involved. Now, let us look at how we can share this information to other members of the business downstream. We have created some example formats, which are the most common used in the market today, such as PDF, STEF, and PVZ. I'm going to select the PVZ here, which will create an interactive set of information based on what has just been created. Let us now take a look at this detailed information from an end user's perspective. Let's say a manufacturing supplier. Here we can see that the information created in Creo Parametric is readily available and easy to understand with a worldwide used application, Adobe Reader. 3D images and relevant notation that were defined in Creo are visible straight away to the end viewer. Another great tool to use is PTC's free Creo view. Here, I'm going to open up the visualization that I just created. The view tabs that were defined in Creo Parametric 
are visible to the end user in this tool. Here we can see them down the left hand side. By simply selecting them, this allows me to load up that particular view and interrogate as required. This would be the default view. Additional information such as titles and through to the particular views I just finished off where we can see those dimensions and the note easily added. With such a source of diverse information readily available to the downstream users, this can lead to the reduction of disturbance to engineers by ensuring relevant information is natively available in a more readable and interactive format. So taking a look at how PTC enables MBD, PTC Creo has a long established roadmap to the adoption of MBD. And over the next few slides, I would like to show how the software is developing to support the growing industry demands. Since the inception of Wildfire 2 in 2004, PTC's CAD software has had the ability to define MBD models. Bringing us up to the latest releases, we can see in Creo 2 that great functionality such as dynamic positioning of dimensions has been introduced to make the use of this approach easier for the user. Coming on to the latest available release, Creo 3, the functionality has been further enhanced with the addition of standardized GTOL capability and ensuring support for the industry-defined ASMIY 14.41 2003 standard on digital product definition for MBD is adhered to out of the box. This ensures that businesses adopting an MBD strategy can be confident in being able to bid for contracts that require this approach. Looking into the future, PTC continues to develop the area of MBD, with it being one of the top priorities for Creo 4, to improve and expand upon the existing capabilities, meeting the continual demands of the market today. I would like to give you a sneak peek of some of these enhancements. Being able to author additional geometric tolerances and create more informative views ensures that PTC Creo continues to support new industry standards. Sharing this new source of information by creating new formats such as STEP AP242 and a bespoke GD and T tab in the 3D modeling environment will deliver a quicker delivery time of information to the end user. I would now like to hand you back to Lee, who will go through how this functionality can be adopted by yourselves today. Thank you, Andrew. Let's take a look now at some best practice advice on how to determine whether an MBD approach is right for your business. The effort required in formulating an MBD strategy depends on a number of factors. The size of your team, complexity of product, and industry standards you are expected to satisfy all play a part. The first step is to identify where the value is. Are there any business goals that adopting an MBD approach might help you achieve faster? How will you justify a changing process for the rest of the business? And what would a sensible adoption roadmap look like? The next step is to develop the process itself. How will the information flow through the business from your authors to the downstream consumers? Key to the success of any MBD strategy is developing working practices for your team to follow. This will ensure consistency of the data set you produce. Technology is also important. Choosing the right tools and deciding how these should be deployed to support the process is critical. Remember, the core MBD functionality is already in every Creo base license, and Creo View Express is available free of charge for downstream consumers. Finally, decide on the training that will be required by both authors and consumers of the MBD data. And how are you going to ensure the lowest possible drop in productivity during early adoption? Regardless of the size of your team and complexity of products, the steps you need to go through remain the same. It's reasonable, however, to expect a small to medium-sized design team to be up and running with MBD with just a few days of effort. In summary, I hope you've seen from the information and technology that we've shared today how an MBD approach can help deliver value to your business. Decreased lead times, increased efficiency, reduced scrap and improved product quality are all achievable if you get the planning and execution of the strategy right by leveraging industry best practice. 
So that concludes today's session. If you'd like to review the material again, a link to the presentation will be sent out shortly. We're also very keen to get some direct feedback around what you've seen today, and we'll be in touch in the next few days to canvas some opinion. Should you have any immediate questions, please don't hesitate in contacting us. So thanks for your time and attention this afternoon. I hope you found it valuable and enjoy the rest of your day. Goodbye.